Okay, so in this video we're going to talk basic combat and I'm going to go ahead and finish the series here because really if you can work through all these concepts um, you can build this thing out and you can pretty much do anything you'd like to do. You should be able to get objects into monster inventories and you should be able to get them moving just like you know the user moves and uh, and stuff like that so I mean really you've got all your components here uh, so I'll start here you know uh, on downloads.linuxclassroom.com I've, go, I've gone ahead and I've dropped a .tar file now I won't be teaching this unit um, again for at least probably a full school year so at the time that you know I sort of introduced this unit to my students and build in the extra challenges and stuff I'll probably remove that full project for the duration of the unit. So there may, may be a few weeks during the year where I don't have that there, but I'll try to put it back afterwards. Uh, as it stands right now, I'm, I'm finished teaching this unit with the students, and um, I just wanted to develop this series as review for myself so that I can go back and look at what I did this year, and also so that I've got uh, some solid resources going forward, and you know, somebody may benefit uh, from it out there. But if you download this RPG.tar, it does have the full code that I've been talking about. Uh, but let's take a look at uh, the combat class, okay? And uh, the combat class, I've got a couple things that I've built in. I created a class called RNG that just has a return random method that returns a random number depending on the range that you pass in. And then inside of game objects, I uh, created a reference to it, R, you know, static RNG, RNG, so I can call RNG return random 100 and it returns a random number. Just, I don't know, I just did that to make my life a little easier, I thought. Okay, um, I've also created a reference to a combat class that has an attack method here that we're going to go ahead and, and use. Now, um, I did forget to mention one thing in the last video, and I'll try to put a note in the last video as well. When we created threading, um, we, I forgot to show you how to start the actual thread to get it running inside of uh, basic, inside of our simple RPG here. Um, you need to have monster thread and you need to call it something and you need to create an instance of it and we pass it the game logic I give it that and uh, you gotta call mt.startmonsterthread to get that thread actually that thread code that I have in there actually started so there's something I totally forgot um, okay so anyway um, inside of um, game objects I create a reference to a combat class that we'll be using okay and here's the combat class Basically, I just have an attack method. And once again, inside of game logic, there is a an if statement that checks for attack and calls this. Um, you know, it, it loops through the rooms and it figures out, okay, it checks room 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, gets the number, sees what room you're in. Based on that room, it loops through all the NPCs, figures out what you want to attack. Does the ID of that NPC match what you typed? Attack troll, for example. Um, and then I determine whether or not it hits return a random between 0 and 100. I just use accuracy. This is where students tend to get creative. They want to, um, they'll tend to create uh, critical hits. Uh, they'll base, uh, they, combat's usually where students are the most effective in being pretty creative. Um, in this case, I just uh, derive a number based on accuracy divided by two, determine whether or not it's greater than 50. If it is, I determine there's a hit. I return a random number just for now between 0 and 10, and uh, I subtract it from the PC's HP. And then I print, you know, the room that we're in, the PC that matched, that matched this, dot name hit you for NPC damage or they missed. And then I basically just walk through that same process with the PC as well. Now I do call if the um, NPC on the PC hit, if the NPC's uh, hit points drop below zero, I call NPC death and I pass it the room number and the, the NPC number within that room. And then we can go ahead and say a, you know, the room that we're in, the NPC that we're, we're dealing with right now has died, and then you can remove that NPC from the array list. Okay. Uh, once again, this full code is uh, on downloads.linuxclassroom.com. Um, you know, if you're new to Java or you just kind of want to write a game and um, find this type of thing interesting, like I do, um, I, I hope it was helpful, and uh, just feel free to email me or uh, post a comment, and uh, I'll be happy to help. So thank you for your time.